all to Ireland and also to Starcraft who have really kindly sponsored um, a silver birch sapling for every book that's been sold tonight. So a couple of quick housekeeping bits before we get started. If you wouldn't mind taking out your phones and just popping them on silent, it would be great for this evening. But you're welcome to take photos um, throughout the event. And also just be aware of the closest exit to you, so it's probably at the back of the church if we have one here as well. Now, I'm going to hand over to a special guest, Father John Jones Green, um, who's also a Kerry man, a former director of All Hallows College in Dublin, and he's now min ministering in Camera West. But John Joe's here as our MC because he was a great friend of John's. He hosted many talks when John was with us, but also since his passing. John Joe's going to carry us through the show tonight and officially open this. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, um, disciples, maybe we say of, of John Murray Arty. It's a great pleasure and privilege for me uh, to just uh, introduce our, our gathering here this evening. Um, it's a great privilege to be able to celebrate the life and legacy of John here in his native place. Thanks to Amanda and Mary, I suppose, first of all, for the opportunity and the huge amount of um, organisation that has obviously been put into this event this evening. Of course, um, the crown glories of the event over this weekend will be uh, the official launch of this magnificent addition to the growing treasure trove of literature now that's growing up around John his own writings and what he has inspired in others. There'll be more about that obviously later, but I have more no doubt the issue with John. The first uh, takes me back to uh, the time when I returned after 15 years working as a, a priest in, in, in England uh, and then coming back to work in the staff in All Hallows College in Dublin in the early 1990s. And, um, one of the areas of responsibility I was given at that time in All Hallows was uh, to be part of a team organising uh, uh, ongoing education events, things like summer schools, uh, spring series of spring talks and autumn talks and so on. One of my colleagues uh, said to me casually one day, he said, uh, there's a guy giving a talk down in Trinity tonight, he's a county man, and uh, I don't know much about it myself, uh, but they say he might be worth listening to. So I know the prospect of, uh, from one carry man to another, if the carry man uh, going to listen to another carry man speaking at Trinity College, how could I resist? Uh, so I went along anyway. And trust at the time, I suppose, John was, was kind of early doing the circuit. He'd be mostly doing his talks and stuff done in the west of Ireland at, uh, at that stage. I'm six years his elder, so I'm not the qualified really to talk about John when he was in school. Because in the national school, the local school here in my mind, I was gone on before John came to school. And from St. Michael's College in the school, I was gone on to Killarney before John came to St. John, or to St. Michael's. So I can talk about John when he came back from Manitoba, when he decided to return from his lecturing in the uh, corridors of power of learning to discover his bush soul in my land. And I remember he gave a lecture in the store soon after he came back. And he was beginning to be discovered as a new voice on the airwaves of Ireland. And he um, was invited to give a lecture in the store. 
went to that lecture. And we were all that night completely bogged over by his stories about the three tall ships that came to the shore. And the three tall ships were three books that he got from his neighbor, Jamie Cassan. Jamie is a near neighbor of John's who visited his house every night and told stories. But he brought with him well, on one occasion, maybe two or three, three occasions, he brought books with him that he had read. Even though Jamie was a small farmer, he didn't farm very much. He read books. And he gave some of those books to John. And there were the three he mentions of the three tall ships who came to his shore were Darwin, Fried, and Einstein. From out of his, as we say, as a hassle, mm -hmm. he fell out of his standing, he fell out of himself, he fell out of his story, as he put it himself later. And he talked that night. <coughs> He talked that night about uh, Martin, the famous Martin Hallard story that he tells so, he's told so often and that's recorded in his books. And it was about where are we, John? And he, Martin was, John was trying to steer Martin home because he was over inebriated on the night and he, to show his way home. Where are we now, John? I don't know now, he said. Martin, can't you hear the cows grazing in the field next door? Can't you hear the, the river on your left hand? Beings, John would say, a refinement that is understood as an impulse for the beautiful in making anything from a chair to a ridge of potatoes to using a schlawn or a sign, a flute or a fiddle, there is an impulse for the beautiful. The man who goes out in the morning and fashions with pride a new ridge of potatoes can in the evening stand back from his work and admire it with the same sense of beauty and pride as a Picasso might view his own work. We aren't housed only in houses or clothes only in our clothes. We are housed in great stories and clothed in great melodies. The creativity of the past flowing through and finding new life in the creativity of the present becomes an enriched inheritance for the future. We might talk about past, present and future as a cultural continuum. It is easy to both glorify and condemn the past but it remains true that it was in the past that our whole cultural inheritance was elaborated. We are, if we so wish, heirs to that richness. I want to speak about this most special day, the summer solstice, which is a planetary day. For us, the season of high summer, and for the southern hemisphere, Describes being a boy of ten out on the Arrow Islands more than 40 years ago and watching as the bonfire lit on Inish Man signaled the lighting of fires one by one across the mountains of Connemara and down through the barren hills into Kerry. Go back further in time to the pre Christian era and the summer solstice was ritualized by the Banasri when the High King of Ireland annually married the land goddess, a re-wedding of the body to the earth, a rite that formalized sacred bonds between Tua, the people or tribe, and Tua, their place, nature, and the nurturing feminine spirit of the land. Like all the major Celtic festivals, this day marks a rite of passage for both nature and ourselves.
We are at summer's hinge. Seeded within today's bright beauty is also a foreshadowing of the autumn and winter to come. All around us, subtle transitions are happening in the natural world. There's a simultaneous rising of energies and a falling away 